Well, for me, because I'm part of the men's eight, there's actually more members than just the eight guys and myself. There's you know, a larger part of the team. I'm involved in a team all the time. So for me, friendship becomes a huge element because um, you know, I'm dealing with these people on a daily basis and inherently you just get to know them. And once the more I get to know them, then the better actually I can do my job as the coxswain of the crew. I'm talking to them and telling them what to do all the time and asking them for more and more and more all the time. So the better that I get to know the guys, then the more I know how to really steer my message for that individual at a certain time. Um, you know, maybe he could be sort of down in the dumps for a couple of weeks about something and so I can help him by, if the better I get to know him, then I can help him get the best out of himself. So for me, friendship's a big element, but then that leads to excellence because, as I said, the more I get to know them, the better I can help them perform. And we both have common goals anyways. I mean, I want to win just as badly as they do. So in some ways, selfishly for me, I, the more I help them, the more it's going to help me. So it's not all about me, it's about how can I make my teammates around me better. Um, and I've often been told that, you know, if I think I'm really good at what I do, then if my teammates are all better than me, then man, that team's going to be really good. With respect comes trust, and you know, for me, what I found very early on in my rowing career was that I had to use my actions, and not just actions as in, hey, I want to win Olympic gold medal. It's what are my daily actions showing the guys? Is it, am I showing them that I really want to win with them, or am I just showing that I, I want, winning is just a statement? It's got to be an action statement. So um, me being able to show them that on a daily basis is really what it comes down to. Well, the, the big thing for me when I think of adversities, um, when I was a kid and I was diagnosed with leukemia, with cancer, um, I didn't realize it at the time, but my character traits were actually being born, I guess you would say, as a seven-year-old kid. And I started to realize pretty quickly that I had three main traits, and they were determination, perseverance, and courage. And so, in, in, I didn't try to develop them. I wasn't trying to be courageous. I needed to be for the situation that I was in if I wanted to live. So it's a bit, bit of a strong statement, a bit, bit harsh, but that was the reality that I was in. And being able to be determined, I had to understand and realize that even though I had no idea where the finish line was for you know, being cured of cancer, I didn't know how long it was going to take or how I was even going to get there, but I had to be determined to get to an endless finish line which is kind of a hard thing for a seven-year-old to wrap its head around, but I, had, I was in this situation, I had to do it. And then perseverance is something that became a daily battle and a weekly battle and a monthly battle for me because I knew when I had a certain drug and I was gonna take it, and I had to take it, that the next week or two weeks was not gonna be very good. And I had to persevere through those one or two weeks knowing that maybe I'd get a, a week or a month Maybe I'd get to go back to school and play with my friends a bit because the common cold for me was very, very bad because my immune system was so low. So those three words are really what sort of defined me into the person that I am. And so now when I come across some adversity, then it's those three character traits that I lean on. And I realize that, you know, when I first tried it for the national team, I barely made it. And the next year I got cut. Well knowing that I am determined and I have perseverance and I have courage, I went back to the team again and you know I, I tried again and I, I knew that I was better than that. I could be better still. Hadn't seen the end yet. So being determined to persevere through those daily workouts even though things might not seem like they're going well, in the long term they did end up going well. So me being able to rely on those three character traits has happened over and over and over. Um, especially even in you know the rowing for 2012 in London we came last in our heat last in the heat and nobody would have everyone was writing us off should say everyone but a lot of people wrote us off you know what are the Canadians doing they're not gonna make it and me knowing that those three character traits were the backbone of who I am I had to figure out ways to to overcome that and not give up not back down knowing that these eight guys in front of me had a dream have a dream and I have to help them get it. And we've only got a few days to figure it out.
mental fitness is a pretty intricate question, an intricate part of what we do. And I found in sport over my career that, you know, probably 90% of it, once you get to an elite level, is all in your head anyways. Uh, when I line up against, you know, other boats in the world, I look across. Physically, we're all pretty close to the same. We do tweak different things and, you know, have different protocols. But at the end of the day, for us in the men's aid anyways, it comes down to who is stronger mentally, who is going to be able to hold on mentally together. And so it's, for me, I, I find it's a, it is in fact a bit of a daily struggle. Like I, when I get up in the morning and go down to the rowing club, and I know we're going out in the eight that day, you'd be surprised if I told you that I'm nervous every time I go out in the eight. Every single time I go out in the eight, and I'm not to sound cocky, but one of the best in the world at what I do. And I'm nervous every time I go out. Now that seems strange, but the reason why I'm nervous is because I want so badly to do well. I so badly don't want to let down my team and let down my crewmates. I don't want to show any sort of, I guess, cracks in my foundation outwardly to the guys. At the same time though, I need to be open enough that um, I'm willing to take chances. I'm willing to put myself out there. And if it doesn't work out, then I am able to fall back on my guys. Usually I want them to fall back on me, but I need to be able to fall back on them. If I make a mistake, I want them to be able to come up and say to me, hey Brian, you know what? Don't worry about it. It's okay, because I do the same thing for them. And so then I have to allow them to do the same thing for me. And so as much as I want to be mentally strong for them, I also have to be mentally vulnerable to allow them to help me when I need help. So although I know that going down to the running club when we're going to the eight, like I said, I'm going to be nervous, doesn't mean I avoid it. Doesn't mean I don't try hard. It doesn't mean I don't push myself to the limit as far as I can that day. Because if I didn't do that, it'd be a disservice to me and to my team and the goals that we're all trying to achieve. So I think uh, for anyone who thinks that an Olympic athlete has it all together and we don't have um, sort of our own little mental struggles on a daily basis is um, quite naive in thinking that. It's sort of like um, if you're going in for a, a meeting or an interview with someone, you know, you get nervous. Or if you're going for a test, you get nervous. and I was told pretty early on in my rowing career that you only get nervous for two reasons. One is because you're not prepared and the other one is because you care. And so then what I started to do to combat my nervousness was I was going to have everything prepared. Prepare as, as best as I could so I didn't go in, I didn't want to go down to the rowing club and say, hey coach, what are we doing today for this practice? Because if I don't know then I wasn't prepared. I should know exactly what we're doing, exactly where we're going to be doing it what I'm going to be focusing on with the guys for that workout. And if I don't know, then I can ask them before we go out. I don't want to ask them on the water, that's too late. So when I go out with the guys, I can tell them, here's what we're going to do, we're going to do this, 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 and this. And that will also gain their trust and some respect from them too, because I'm doing all of my due diligence and I'm making sure that I'm as prepared as possible. So then that nervousness I feel will go away because I'm then nervous because I care. So it's actually a very good reason to be nervous. If I'm nervous because I'm unprepared, that's my own fault. And I will tell you that I have been nervous for that reason before in practice. You know, maybe the night before I, you know, got distracted doing something else, maybe, maybe surfing the computer, playing some game or something that was not necessary. Something that wasn't going to produce the best results for me the next day. But in having made that mistake, I also need to learn from that mistake and realize, didn't have a great row, I let my guys down, all because I was fooling around playing a silly game. Or I was reading a book that I didn't need to read that night. So then going forward the next day, I don't do that again. And so um, be, be as prepared as you can so that you are nervous for the right reasons. That's how I got past that. <music>